What's up, guys? Bang, bang. Lunch money time. Well, while she's trying to get rich, the rest of us is trying to get her lunch money right. I'm here by myself without Plina. Oh, Plina is digitally available. The beautiful, intelligent Plina Marinova. Don't forget, lunch money is now sponsored by BlockFi. Go to blockfi.com slash lunch money. Get money, get paid. 8.6% interest on your deposits in your interest-bearing account. You can also deposit crypto and get a U.S. dollar loan. Yo, Polina, what up? What up? How is my kitchen doing? Is it your kitchen or my kitchen? Or is it both of our kitchens? Eh. I feel like when I, I feel like when I yell, yo, Polina, it's like when Rocky's in the boxing ring uh, and he's like, yo, Adrian. I'm like, yo, Polina. I don't know that. I know, All right, ready? Watch that movie. Because you came from a different country and you hate American culture. It's fine. What's going on with dead stimulus? All right. The Fed sent $1.4 billion in stimulus checks to more than a million deceased people. And basically what happened was that the Treasury doesn't talk to the Social Security office. So they like didn't have the people who died, the list of people who died. Hot take. That's not that much money. 1.4 really? billion sounds crazy. Yeah, 1.4 billion sounds crazy, but it was a million people had died and they didn't know about it. Out of the more than 300 billion they sent, it's like 30 basis points of the money ended up going to dead people. I bet you that they sent more people more money to people fraudulently, like people who were committing fraud than they did dead people. So like hmm. a billion sounds bad, but out of the 300 billion, it's only like 30 basis points. I actually would have guessed that it'd be higher. Still, I think they should have done better and not muddled the job like they did. I agree. I definitely agree. Do you have a shirt on? I do have a shirt on. What are you talking about? Oh, all right. I just didn't know. All right. Uh, that's fine. Dead <laughs> stimulus. But they got people. They got to make people. What? What'd you say the day what? Nothing. Okay, lemonade. Ready? Hey guys, that means I'm in trouble. That means I'm in trouble. Don't worry, she can't get me. <laughs> What's going on with lemonade? SoftBank backed lemonade, the insurance company, wants to raise up to $286 million in an IPO, which would value it at about 25% less than its latest funding round. What do we think? I read the S1, the entire S1. I read yeah. it. He did. I'm bullish I on was the there. I I'm bullish on Why? the company. They're basically using technology to attack the industry vertical. And what they're able to do by using technology is they get customers earlier when they're younger and they have small dollars. So you buy, you know, $10, $20 uh, a month policies. And then as you get older, you just stay with them. So the LTV or the lifetime value grows and grows and grows. And so the acquisition cost is very low for somebody that ends up staying with you and you get more and more of their wallet share over time. And the fact that they're using technology means that they can actually have a deflationary impact on the business model. So costs go down. And what's interesting is it's still insurance. So it's a great business in general, right, of insurance. And then on top of all of that, they've also backstopped, I think it was 75% of claims with reinsurance. So they are not even holding the actual liability. So it, it's a pretty interesting model in terms of using technology to disrupt a, a known existing good business. And also you have, have some very interesting unit economics to acquire customers much earlier in the life cycle. And as they get older, you get more and more revenue from them. Do we care that in the private markets it was valued as high as two billion, and now uh, it's going to have a market cap of around one point three billion? No, it just means that the private markets were inflated, which is pretty obvious, right? Like, yeah, there was a bunch of frothiness, but like, it probably also means that this is more like the real, the actual valuation. Uh, compared to what was going on in the private market. So the only people who get screwed are the private market investors who bought the top, right? Everyone else is fine. Right. So basically, what, if you, you're you rich, what? Would you buy some stock? Um, 
I don't buy stock. All right. By the way, when you smack your lips, we can hear it real loud on the uh, recording. Oh, great. Great. That's the point. <laughs> why, don't you, All right. why don't you buy stock? Why don't I buy it? Yeah. Because I don't buy individual stocks. Ah, smart lady, smart lady. All right, what's going on with Albertsons? So the U.S. supermarket operator Albertsons decided to go ahead with a downsized $800 million IPO on Thursday. So that's um, another IPO in 2020 that uh, is kind of missing its targets. It's just reality, man. World's changed. Can't be bringing them inflated ass valuations into the public markets or you get get shot by the public market investors. Right. But do we think that these companies would have gone like if if it wasn't for the pandemic and they had gone public as scheduled in 2020 under normal circumstances, they wouldn't have to downsize. If it wasn't for the pandemic, of course, but the pandemic drove asset prices down, right? So like there's plenty of companies where their stock price is down. So you could make the argument if they'd gone public beforehand, they would still be at the same valuation that they're going public at now because it would have just dropped in the in the public markets. Some people would argue that if they had been gotten public, it might actually have inflated, but who knows? So why don't they just wait until like 2021 or something? They probably need the money. Uh that, I mean, that's one That's one reason. Another is they actually may think that now's a good time for some reason, like grocery stores are hot or something, right? In terms of their yeah. pandemic proof, something like that. I don't know. Got it. Yo, my hair looks wow, okay. I didn't even have a haircut. <laughs> you have great lighting though, I will say. Um, I never appreciated the lighting of the kitchen until now when I don't have it. It's just my, it's so, just my nice skin. It is. Your skin is glowing today. Glowing. Um, the pandemic you look just as has come. What? You look just as pretty as I do. Yeah, I I heard it. I just wanted you to say it again. But like, I think I look prettier than you do. <laughs> you look just as pretty as I do. Go ahead. What's going on with Chuck okay. E. Cheese? The pandemic <laughs> has come for... The one and only Chuck E. Cheese. It's filing for bankruptcy after 43 remember years of business. Remember when y'all was all saying that Bitcoin was going to zero and oil never would? Remember when y'all was calling it Chuck E. Cheese coins? Well, the pandemic <laughs> brought oil to negative prices and it bankrupt Chuck E. Cheese and Bitcoin's still here, baby. <laughs> okay. So... It listed nearly $2 billion in debt and $1.7 billion in assets in its bankruptcy petition. So it's just going to re, I think it's going to restructure. Of course, it's, it has to. Equity gets wiped out. They'll get new owners and they'll move on. But I bet you Chuck E. Cheese is owned by a private equity firm, right? Yeah. You can almost guarantee it. It is? It is, I believe. Yeah, because only private equity owners would be dumb enough to lever up a company with $1.8 billion in assets with $2 billion of debt. And they probably sucked all the val- the uh, value out of it like vultures and left it oh, yeah, to it's, die. It's owned- Why do you do a man Chuck E. Cheese like that? It's owned by Apollo Global Management, massive firm. Come on, Apollo got rich and Chuck E. Cheese got sent to bankruptcy court. It's nonsense. But hey, don't forget, don't forget, best performing asset class coming out of this crisis. Go ahead. What's going on with Google? Google will start paying some publishers to license their news articles. Eh, What do you think, Miss Journalist? Well, I think I think this is nothing new. I think Facebook uh, has been doing it for a while now. It's about time Google does it. I guess if you're going to license somebody's content, you have to pay them for it. I just don't think it's a good idea for media companies to be reliant on the revenue from big tech firms. They cover them. I agree. How can you objectively cover Google when they are your revenue source? 
nobody's objective in this world, but I agree generally that it's a bad idea to become dependent on the big evil Google. I actually don't think ev Google's e evil, but I like to give them a hard time that they removed the motto of don't be evil. Hmm. Okay. Was that, Are was that ready? Hmm? Was that was, hmm? was that like a, you're not funny, but I'm trying to be nice. Yes. That is exactly what that was. Okay. By the way, my lighting's great, but the uh, lamp that it looks like you turned on there is shining off the side of your head. Okay, yeah, you look ready? just as pretty as I do. Okay, what's going on with LeBron James? LeBron James uh, is raised, has raised $100 million for a new media company alongside Maverick Carter, his agent. Uh, and they're going to launch the media company featuring African-American content uh, creators geared toward the community. So that's interesting. I don't I, think it's new. I'm, I'm right? all about these. Like, what? I don't think it's new. Spring Hill Entertainment is the name of it. It's been around for a while. They've produced a bunch of shows like uh, the the uh, show in the barber shop and a bunch of other things. I think they've been working on it for a while. Mm. It has like a hundred well, and four. Yeah, I think that the more story the the more stories we can bring from different voices, the better. I'm all about just I want to hear from everybody, and I want to hear everybody's perspective. I agree. A hundred million dollars, baby. What up? LBJ. The hundred million dollar man. Actually, he's probably yeah. a billion. Ah, I don't think he's a billionaire. No, not yet. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for what are we going to ask people to do for lunch money this week? I want people to take the YouTube video, go in the comments, and whoever leaves Polina the nicest comment, she'll pick a winner. And we'll tell you on, uh, on Monday. Oh, Extra I'll, points I'll take all the compliments I can get. Extra points if you say something nice about me, too. Ooh. Okay. For the record, I hate uh, doing this remote like this. This is super hard. And there's a lot of lag. So cut us a break. Be nice to I us. Know. I know. I'm a lot always of funny. I can, keep, I can keep interrupting her right remotely. Like literally, I could just do it all day. A lot of people last time said they thought that we got in an argument before lunch money, but that's that was just because I kept getting frustrated that you were freezing. I couldn't hear you and you kept interrupting me. So NBD, we're not in an argument. We're just uh, having technical difficulties. <laughs> Wait, also, you don't know this, but... Are you ready? No. I have made the executive decision by myself that starting today, maybe tomorrow or maybe Monday, maybe every Friday, maybe every day. But for today, I will be uh, ending the show with a joke. <laughs> How excited are you? Okay, so here's my joke. <laughs> Why don't calculus majors throw house parties? Hold on. Why? Get you have to guess. I don't know. Okay. Are you ready for the answer? <laughs> That's why I said go ahead. Because you should never drink and derive. <laughs> Too funny. Too funny. Anyway, that's it for that, today, you guys. That, you, think that, you think that's funny? That's why you're a nerd. <laughs> you're a nerd because you think that joke is funny. I think it's hilarious. That joke, literally, my, my heart rate did like this. I, it didn't go anywhere. Like, that's not funny. I think that people will funny. like it. I think people will like it, and okay. I think you are wrong. That's well, it for today. Decision. I'm going to bring my own jokes. To the show now. Oh, before you bring your own jokes, do you want to tell us about our sponsor today? We already talked about them. Pay attention. You're not even paying attention. See, this is why this is why this show, this show is 
so reliant on me. You may be the talent, but me, I'm the operational excellence around here. Joe and I make all this happen. I think I think I might have been frozen for that period, but okay. Ah, uh, if you say so. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen at home, your boy is gonna have a me day today. I am going to drink some Bud Lights. I'm gonna order some pizza. Woo wee! I even watch some last Netflix night, on TV. Last night I got a call from uh, downstairs in the lobby, and they were like, "Paulina." you have a delivery. And I was like, what delivery? And they were like, you have sushi here. Your sushi has arrived. And I was like, Anthony, go pick up your sushi. <laughs> That's a me day. Hey, if, if Polina's going to abandon me and make me survive on my own, I'm going to order out. I'm going to drink some wine. It's all right. I made a big mess too, but nobody can see it. Yeah, I'll, it'll be clean by the time you come back. All right, guys, that's it for lunch money today. Well, Wall Street's trying to get rich. The rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. Hopefully, Polina will be back on Monday. See you guys then. Bang, bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget, Lunch Money is now sponsored by BlockFi. So go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind <laughs> Polina. They've got three products. <laughs> they can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account. Or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.